long gone are the days when some professional athletes would stand on the sidelines of life and not participate in the court or field of social injustice. These days, more and more athletes, such as San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick or San Antonio Spurs coach Greg Popovich, are advocating for and speaking out about their social justice concerns. Now, here are two folks to weigh in right now is Doc Stanley of Sports in Debt Block Talk Radio. Welcome, Doc. Welcome back. Hey, thanks to Matt. It's always a pleasure, Mike. Good to see you, my friend. See you again, too. Also, back with us is a show is former NFL player and cowboy, co-founder of the Trade Whitfield School in East New York, A.B. Whitfield. Welcome, A.B. It's been quite some time. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, it's it's been been a long time. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Wish we had you on when I leave, but we're going to have you back on when he passed, but we're going to have you back on in uh, uh, next month. How about the you know, Cowboys? Let's talk about what's going on right now. I mean, it seems like the sleeping giant, the athlete, has finally come of age, has woken up. He's speaking about social injustice, just like during the 60s, early 70s. What sparked this? Is it Colin Kaepernick? Is it just the uh, general things that are going on in society these days? I think it's a combination of people being filled to the brim. Mm. You know, it, it, it's uh, like a volcano, it's just steady, steady, coming to the top, and then I think it takes just a little bit just to spill over. And what I like about Colin is that, you know, uh, in a nice quiet way, uh, not with a lot of anger, mm. but just a purposeful way of showing his way, whether people like it or not, that uh, I don't like what's going on. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really kind of like the way he's doing it. And I think some of his teammates and coaches, and, 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 and even the league, I think, kind of understand what he's trying to do. It, it, it may not please a lot of people, but I, I applaud him for it. And also, because of social media, he's not so isolated. Back in the day, maybe the 60s or 70s, right. he may have been isolated right. and kicked off the team totally, right? And he has a huge contract. Well, the platform, Left too. Dollars. He's got the big platform. When we go back, I mean, you know, Ali was the guy that started all this. Before Ali, Elgin Baylor took a stand on some injustice and some racial issues. Uh, you know, we go back to the Olympics, mm-hmm. Carlos and Smith, uh, you know, Jabal, who's probably been uh, castrated by this whole thing because, you know, he took that stand against the Olympics. And you look back, here's a guy who's one of the greatest players ever who's never got opportunity to do anything. In There's the A.B. and Muhammad Ali yeah. right now. Yeah. Right Now, you're also a sparring partner, right, up there in Dealing, I, Pennsylvania? I, I, I had a chance to work out in his camp, a gracious man. My idol, my two, my well, my three idols. Mm-hmm. Jim Brown, who's my mentor, friend, and my idol, Muhammad Ali, and the great Nelson Mandela, mm-hmm. my three heroes. Now, he really caught the devil when he yeah. stood up during that particular time. Just tell us about it. Paid, paid the ultimate price. Uh, and also, there's another guy that people never talk about, Kirk Floyd in baseball. No, quick, quick question. The ultimate Without price. Question. Question. Money. Mm-hmm. And see, these guys weren't driven up. Jim Brown, Muhammad, they Kirk weren't Floyd. driven by money. Kirk, yeah. Pride and principle, you know, and you have to applaud them for it. For a long time before even we as a people understood the magnitude of what they did and, and how great it was. It's a sacrifice of your career mm-hmm. and money. So they were never materialistic. Jim Brown was never materialistic. Mm. He could probably be playing right now. Mm-hmm. But it's just that you sometimes there are individuals in our time that stand up and say, you know, I'm, I'm not going to take it. And anymore. also the great Paul Robeson, too. Right? Oh, he was Robeson, a Robeson, American and American that have to be included. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, and, you know, and the thing about people forget, you know, African Americans, they didn't do this just for African Americans. They did it for all society. Mm-hmm. You know, it just wasn't a black thing. It was a humanity thing. I think that's forgotten. Mm-hmm. That, you know, when they took stands against injustice, the, the, the frustration benefited everybody. Everybody today in our society owes what they have to the Civil Rights Movement. But because of the Civil Rights Movement, they were allowed to go to sleep for a minute during the O.J. era. I mean, O.J. was, you know, he oh, was yeah. the endorsement king up oh, yeah. to Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. And they did not take a stand. And most athletes during that period would not take a stand because of their endorsements. Exactly. You know, it, it, that's the fear of losing everything. You see, we have come at, as, as a society materialistic. Our kids mm-hmm. are materialistic. Yeah. There's no spirituality. There's no morals taught. You know, it's, it's the bling bling, the designer. Kids won't go to school now unless they they, they done. You know, with with the, with the emblems. Nah, you know, at least you and, earned that one. Yeah, well, well, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and and let's get I, I was a novice mm-hmm. coming out of a small HBCU, mm-hmm. not having an agent played or tried to play or got cut by nine different teams. By myself, no agent, 
and I saw some of the worst conduct ever mm -hmm. on the other side, you know, and, and just be treated as a pro. And also during that era, there were some athletes that stood up during that O.J. Michael Jordan era, which was Craig Hodges. Mm -hmm. He took a stand oh, during the and, um, and, and against George Bush. He paid for it. He, he, was, paid for it. he was whiteballed out of the league. Oh, yeah. Whiteballed? <laughs> yeah, you, oh, no, you're right. He was, he was. <laughs> he, he, and, and, and he got no support. Mm -hmm. That was a big issue. No, I think the, the guy who's always been the mouthpiece for the basketball player has been Charles Barkley. He's a guy who's always spoke up. But you're right. Craig Hodges took a stand. You know, and, and he took a stand on situations that, that were righteous. And, you know, it's, it's amazing when African-Americans speak out, it, it's never the right time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This ain't the play. And a lot of people said that about cabinet. Right. And, and, you know, and Randy Moore said, hey, man, you know, I understand. What I'm, I'm going to be African-American. When is the right time? But because Ali, Tommy Smith, Paul Robeson, Kurt those Flood. folks, Kurt Flood, they stood up, it's a little bit easier not you know because he has his contract I mean hey if they get rid of him he has 11 million dollars mm -hmm. and he could go ahead and support all the causes that he would like at that time where Ali and them and Kurt Flood they were really caught the devil oh yeah Ali Ali lost three and a half years uh, of his prime Kurt Flood was was white balled out of baseball mm -hmm. I mean the same thing has happened just today with, with Barry Barnes Barry Barnes was white balled out of baseball Mm -hmm. And you know, he was a guy too that you know Barry kind of took a stand on some issues there too. But he was had this dual sour personality supposedly. And if you look back, Barry Bonds was white balled out of baseball. And you also have to look at Bill Walton. Speaking of that, right? Bill Walton he stood up also during the seventies oh, yeah. at UCLA yeah, yeah. and demonstrated against the Vietnam War. Well, well I mean, you know, you know uh, injustice anywhere, you know, and you know. Uh, Malcolm X said, I'm for right, regardless who says it. You know, it's not a black or white issue. And, you know, Walton was one of the guys that stood up and, and had a lot to say. Mm -hmm. I just don't think this country is, is, is rated for uh, strong, black, rich, powerful black men uh, to be heard. Uh, uh, I, I think there's a fear somehow that these guys can hurt society or do harm or we could be influenced by them. But I think in, in more cases than that, these guys really just want to stand on causes, pure causes. And, and, and like Doc was saying, and it's for everybody, it's not just for all black. When, when Jim Brown spoke up in the locker room, he spoke for justice, all the players in the locker room. You know, I mean, of course, he, 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 was, a, he, he was a soldier for all the guys in the league because he was the only strong voice that you looked up to in the, in the league in the 60s. Mm -hmm. you, you, you revered him because he, he was a spokesman. He could go to a white golf club and take you with him when we couldn't go. And, and there was nothing said about Jim. You see him say he, he could man that, 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 that type of attention from people. But these guys never took stands just for a certain race. Mm -hmm. Carpenter on down there is, is for the 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 general population. But do you think that but during the OJ period, the uh, 70s, mid 70s, up till maybe the 80s, a lot of them sold out because of the endorsements, because of the money. Oh, yeah, the I don't money. think so. I, they just didn't speak up, I and mean, because the endorsements have never been there for African athletes. You know, Joe Lewis retired thinking he could live off endorsements, so the endorsements had never. OJ was the exception. I mean, so endorsements had never been there for the black athlete. So they basically either just didn't speak up because there was no monetary endorsements coming to them. I mean, even the great Jim Brown. How many times have you seen Jim Brown come? Jim Brown's the greatest ever play ever played. You didn't see Jim Brown on TV. You didn't see Oscar Roberts, another guy who took us there, Dr. J. So the endorsers were never there for us. So not that they sold out because of endorsements. They just didn't speak up. That's just the bottom line. Right. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you on. I want to have you back next month. Thank you. We're going to talk about the 70s. Thank you. And what a freewheeling New York City was, how freewheeling sports wise. And let me say this. Yeah. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> <The> Cowboys, <laughs> huh? From the Jack Prescott. Anything could happen. All right, gentlemen. Thanks.